Oh, hi, buddy. Did you have a good day? Yeah? You spent a lot of it just sitting right there. You like that spot? It's filling up with a lot of cat hair. And then I sit there. So it gets stuck to my butt. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Tuesday. Um, it's been, it's been good. It's been a really good day. I bet you're going to try, are you going to try and get in my lap? Because sometimes if I sit on the floor, he like, tries to get in my lap. I don't know what he's after. He might turn into a lap cat. First things first, um, ear is healing up pretty well. Uh, I finished the pills today. <laughs> Who knows? You gonna you gonna come back up and curl up in the lap? Survey says probably. I finished the pills today. Um, I, I as a reminder, I had um, pills, antibiotics for the uh, inner ear infection, and then uh, drops for the outer ear infection. Finish the drops today, so or not the drops, the pills today. So that's good. I only have the drops left, and I got to do the drops for another like three days. But right now things are going good. Um, haven't had any pain now for like two days, and you know that you can still tell that there's something not right. But otherwise things are going good. And um, I actually, uh, the thing that would irritate my ear probably the most would be like having. The headset on and I had the headset on today for quite a long time because we did a long long first 20 stream and uh, I was fine no problems didn't bother me at all um, speaking of uh, we did a first 20 stream today uh, we did an extended one actually because the way I've been doing these is I've been trying to get four done at the beginning of the month and that takes care of you know every Friday for that month but this time we did five and I had planned to do four and while I was in the middle of doing four, um, I had mentioned about doing possibly a fifth one and uh, the way the chat reacted so positively, I was like, all right, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. So the games that I did uh, was I started off with Tokyo Mirage Sessions. To the full title is Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp F.E. Encore, I believe, and that is a Wii U port to the Switch, and that was courtesy of Nintendo. They sent that code over, and that was interesting. Um, it was a good, it was a good game. It's just the story was insane. Like there was, there was a lot of stuff happening and happening very quickly, and the the hero was like super confused, but then moments later was like, I know how to do all of this stuff. I've suddenly realized my power. So there's a lot of like really weird stuff that was happening in it. But mechanically, the game seemed quite sound. There was a really cool uh, system of combos where, depending on the weaknesses of the enemy that you were fighting, and the other party members that were in your party, and the moves that you used, depending on all these factors, you could do basically combo moves where one party member uses up their you know special to do a thing, but it corresponds with other party members and they get to attack for free. It was actually quite neat, and I really liked. I, I talked about it a few times in the first twenty. Really liked the UI design. I know it's kind of a weird thing to mention, but every once in a while stuff like that will stick out. Um, sometimes good, sometimes bad, and sometimes just neither just sticks out. But uh, I liked it, and um, the pause screen in the game was really nice too, where you had the main characters just laying in a field of flowers. Again, these are probably not what most people would point out about the game, but I don't know, I play, I play a lot of different games because I'm playing a game, essentially a new game every single week, um, and getting a chance to see just little things like that that stick out in my mind is, is interesting. Um, I also get a chance to play Okami for the first time. Um, it's been out for a long time. I, I always knew that eventually I'd probably cover it for First 20, and uh, I got to play it for an hour today, and it was really beautiful. Um, I can see why a lot of people enjoy it. It's, um, it's a game that at some point I hope to have the time to devote to. I know it's, it's not like a super long game, but it is a longer game. 
Um, I think most, mostly I just want Mal to be able to experience enough that she could feel comfortable making some sort of painting based off of it, just because I think more than any other painting, um, more than any other game, like Okami has been like the most requested game for a painting. Uh, and it, I mean, it's fairly obvious I and mean, it's just a, it's, it's a game that a lot of people associate with art. Um, just for the fact that the game has a very powerful art direction, and then also art is a part of the plot, um, because you are doing these, you know, ink brush uh, drawings that correspond with the world. I won't spoil anything, but that's kind of that's kind of like the big mechanic of the game, and you you do that early on. Um, it was it was neat. It was neat, and I, I was glad I finally got a chance to play it. Um, it feels very similar um, to Twilight Princess a little bit, because you're playing as a wolf, and the only other experience I have in a video game playing as a wolf is Twilight Princess, so it felt very similar to me, but uh, the game was good. Then, on a whim, um, I did the demo for Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Um, the DX version's coming out on Switch, and that went really well. Um, it was It was funny. I don't want to spoil it in case this comes out before that first 20 does, but um, I took the quiz at the beginning and uh, it was good. It was really good and uh, I just I had a fun time playing through it. And I remember vaguely parts of it because I played the Game Boy Advance version for an extra life one year, but it was, um, it, I mean, it's been a long time for one and also it's just the graphical with the graphical improvements and everything like it's just it's uh it's nice it's nice it's nice that uh fans of the series will get to enjoy the nostalgia from that and then also it's nice because being on the switch there's going to be an entire new generation of people that get to enjoy that game which is one of the reasons i love ports and remakes and re-releases um you know just for that reason uh then we did what did i play next oh i played um Spyro Reignited Trilogy, specifically the first game. What's funny is that I was getting ready to go into it, and I, I hadn't even remembered that I had done a first 20 of the original Spyro game for uh, PlayStation. It was chat that reminded me, and I was like, really? I don't even remember this. So I probably, I, I haven't watched that first 20, but I have a feeling that I probably covered the exact same amount of stuff in this one as I do the other one. The game's just pretty. Um, one of the things I mentioned in that video is that I am almost jealous of PlayStation kids just because, you know, with both the Spyro and the Crash remakes, they get to experience the nostalgia of these remakes in a way that I don't get to just because I didn't grow up with these games. My, my fondest memories, if you can call them that, of uh, Spyro... Um, is that I played like the demo disc of Spyro in different d department stores or whatever, and like that's it. And for whatever reason, I have fairly strong memories about that. I don't know why, but I do. Um, and I remember like running around and burning the sheep and headbutting all the stuff and, and, and spending a, a fairly sizable amount of time with it. Um, but that was it. Like, that's my ent entire memories. And one of the things that was interesting, getting a chance to play it, I was like, oh, this game's very short, and all of the areas feel very small. Like, the game design, I mean, it's old, for sure, but it's just, it's so simple. And it's, it's not simple necessarily in a bad way, although it is simple. It's just, it's charming. It really is. It's it's kind of hard to put your, your finger on it. And I think one of the reasons is that I just really, really like Spyro as a character. Um, and getting a chance to see him and all of these other older dragons come to life in this uh, uh, this remake. I, I don't know. It's just, it's really beautiful. And, and it, it did. It, it made me feel, I guess, jealous of like, oh man, you know, it would have been awesome to have grown up with Spyro and then this come out and just be able to be like, oh my god, and really, you know, latch on to that. Um, but again, anytime games get remakes and, and stuff like that, I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, I hope one day... I hope one day we'll get something from the Mother series, specifically Earthbound. Uh, I remember 
and this has been a few years back, but I remember when Final Fantasy 3, I think it's 3, for the DS, was unveiled. And just the idea of like, oh man, you know, it's, it's the same game, but it's being presented in a new um, style. And I, I just thought how cool that was. And I, I was like, I always thought that that would be perfect for Earthbound to do something interesting like that. And then, um, you know, over the years I've seen some other, like, artists take on the idea for, for games in general, but then also for Earthbound specifically, like doing um, uh, clay models or uh, cardboard or just all sorts of, like, various things. And I'm like, yeah, this is a really cool idea. So, you know, eventually the pro that sort of thing will probably happen. And uh, I look forward to whenever that day arrives. And then last but certainly not least, um, the fifth game I played tonight was called Not For Broadcast, and it's a little weird for me because I don't normally do, um, I don't normally do early access games. But I did an early access game tonight, and it's because I got the email for it from the dev, and the game looked so interesting that I was like, I really gotta try this out. And the, the gist of it is you are working at a television station, and you are controlling the live broadcast that is going out to everybody. And most of your responsibilities in, uh, revolve around um, switching cameras. So like there will be multiple cameras set up on an interview between two people or whatever. And you are controlling which camera is live at the time. And uh, so you're just basically running this, this switchboard and you're trying to make sure that the ratings stay up, you know, that people are watching. And occasionally people will uh, swear live on air, and because there's like a two second delay, you have a chance to catch that swear and bleep it so it doesn't go to air. Um, and there were some other mechanics and stuff too, but like, it was frantic. It was, it was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed it, but I ended up not talking much at all during the entire first 20 because I was so focused on trying to make sure that I was doing things correctly. And it was, it was quite difficult, but it was fun. And I think more importantly, it was unique. Um, nothing against video games or where they're going um, or indie developers or anything like that. But I have played a lot of games that fall into very similar genres. I mean, I've, I have played a whole lot of Metroidvania games and uh, 2D platforming games and things like that, especially in the last like two to three years. And as a general rule, they, they try to come up with something new and unique, and I like that, but it's very rare you get to play something that's just like completely off the wall. I mean, this feels closer to, I mean, in some ways, if we're looking way back, like Night, uh, uh, night Trap. Kind of like Night Trap, kind of like uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. So you got like a few of these little elements in there, but in a way that has not been seen in video games before, at least that I can that I can remember. And uh, it was great. I really enjoyed it. Now the big problem was we started at four, and we didn't finish until I think a little after nine. So it was a long stream, um, but I had a lot of fun. And again, the good news is we sat down today. We took the afternoon and the evening, and uh, we did five first 20 videos, and that's that's wonderful, because that helps me out a lot, uh, making sure that those are done, so then I can focus my attention on stuff and not have to worry about first 20 for five weeks. And as far as I know, um, all the recording stuff went fine, uh, so stuff is synced up, and we don't have any other audio issues, so things for these first 20s are good. And um, I just want to say a, uh, a thank you uh, for everyone over on Stephen Place for being patient, because I know that there's been, you know, a little oddity here or there with um, some of the stuff that we've produced for First 20, and it takes a while to work out the bugs, especially in a live environment, but thank you for being patient, and uh, I think, knock on wood, we might finally be to the point where things are working well. Yeah. Anyway, um, I'm going to end this off by returning to the first game that I talked about, uh, for first 20 this evening, uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, and um, focus on the, the, the point that at this time, most, most of the Wii U library, um, at least first party titles, um, 
very important titles in the library have been ported to Switch, um, or in some cases ported elsewhere. I know that we just, the, the Kickstarter for w Wonderful 101, like just launched, and I actually backed it at the physical level um, just in the event that they didn't do a retail release. I just wanted to make sure that I would have a physical copy. Um, but n understanding now that all of the Wii U stuff, for the most part, is, is on Switch, what are the last remaining things that you would like to see moved over? And this goes for Wii U, because the obvious answers, I think, are probably Cat World and Pikmin 3. Um, so what are things that you would like to see moved over there? And then I'm just going to open this up to uh, any of the previous consoles, too. What's something that's, like, on Xbox uh, 360, and you're like, I wish that they would make this backwards compatible or port this to Xbox One? What's something on PS3 that you're like, God, I wish they would bring this to PS4? Um, anything, you know, from the last generation that you're like, I really wish that, you know, this was available to play. Um, they've done a really good job moving stuff from the Wii U to the Switch, and I mean, again, it's perfectly good software, it's just that the Wii U sold really badly, and, um, I don't know, I, I, I'm, I'm holding out hope that Pikmin 3 is on its way to the Switch. I don't know that, but I'm holding out hope for that. I think Cat World is all but certain. I think that I think that's definitely going to happen. I think that would be crazy if it didn't. But Pikmin 3, I'm still not sure about, and I'm really, really hoping they do. Really hoping they do. Anyway, I talked about video games for a long time. Hopefully, that was that was cool. Um, I basically just recapped some some games I played today. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed that. I don't know. If you didn't, let me know. If you did, let me know. You can talk about things uh, in the comments. I'm gonna end it here. Uh, I need to get some sleep. Tomorrow's another day. Um, I feel good again about today because of all the work that was done. And uh, I'm getting to the point now where I'll, actually a lot of February is getting accomplished to the point where I should be able to focus on one thing and uh, really, really come at it pretty hard. And I'm, I'm super excited about that. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, ugh, I'm old. Let's meet back tomorrow, shall we?